what is the best dose of turmeric? How much turmeric should I take? My name is Dave, I'm a pharmacist, and here's turmeric characterized by that vibrant yellow color, which comes from a molecule in the turmeric known as curcumin. Now curcumin accounts for about three to 4% of the overall mass of turmeric. And curcumin also happens to be the component of turmeric that is credited for the majority of the health benefits of turmeric. So what we really want is the curcumin. So how much curcumin do we have to consume? Well, just to get a detectable amount of curcumin in the bloodstream, you'd have to consume two or more grams of curcumin a day, which is equivalent to 50 or more grams of turmeric. That is a lot of turmeric. Fortunately, there is an alternative. Black pepper can be used to boost the bioavailability of curcumin. A little less than a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper, roughly 400 milligrams, contains about 20 milligrams of piperine, which is the amount that you would need to increase curcumin bioavailability by 20 times. So those are the basics just to get going on this conversation about the optimal dose of turmeric. Now, India produces nearly all the world's turmeric and consumes about 80% of it. In India, the average person consumes around 2,000 to 2,500 milligrams of turmeric each day and 330 milligrams of black pepper. So that breaks down to about 100 milligrams of curcumin and 16.5 milligrams of piperine. So if you assume that that 16.5 milligrams of piperine is enough to provide that 20x boost in curcumin bioavailability, then that's equivalent to about two grams of pure curcumin consumption. So that summarizes what's happening in India, but what about other places like the United States? Well, we don't really like spice, do we? We'd rather tuck it away in a capsule and have a company put it in there for us. And then the company wants to have a unique selling proposition. They need to have something novel to sell us. So they know that curcumin has absorption problems, bioavailability problems. So they come up with their own proprietary ways of getting that curcumin into the bloodstream. And we see things on labels like ultra high absorption and bioavailability enhanced curcumin. According to this paper from 2014, 46 bioavailability enhanced curcumin formulations were identified. And you can only imagine that in recent years, that number has probably gone up. My question as a pharmacist, is this safe? We're taking a spice, turmeric, known for surprising health benefits. We are isolating the component that's credited for virtually all the health benefits, the curcumin. Then we are administering it in massive doses in the form of supplements. And then furthermore, boosting curcumin's availability in the bloodstream by 20 times, sometimes more, using these different bioavailability enhancers. I say this is unexplored territory. What happens when you pump the bloodstream full of curcumin? Is there any such thing as an unsafe dose? According to the reference at the bottom of the screen, some studies suggest that curcumin possesses both pro-oxidative and anti-oxidative effects. And that is a dose dependent relationship. What they found is that at low doses, you get the desired antioxidant effect, but at higher doses, you get a pro oxidative effect, which can be dangerous because if you oxidize DNA, for instance, that can result in a mutation that gives rise to cancer. So these researchers took some cells and placed them in basically test tubes with varying concentrations of curcumin in solution. And what they found was there was significant mitochondrial DNA damage at curcumin concentrations of five micromolar. And I'm going to break that down into more practical terms, like for instance, an oral dose. But just to point out, uh, we don't want to have curcumin levels anywhere near five micromolar in our bloodstream. We'd like to be well below that. So I'm calling the threshold for DNA damage roughly 2.5 micromolar. So our target dose should achieve a serum concentration that peaks out at below that level, below 2.5 micromolar. So what is the dose that gets us in that vicinity? In this study of 25 people, a dose of eight grams of curcumin daily resulted in peak serum concentrations of 1.77 micromolar on average. 
Now you'll see that the uh, standard deviation includes all the way up to 3.64 micromolar, and I'm calling that the danger zone. So consequently, eight grams is going to be too much. Also, just a reminder, to get eight grams of curcumin, one would have to consume 200 grams of turmeric. Obviously, that's not practical, and in this study, they were taking a curcumin supplement. So this study was looking at curcumin alone without any kind of bioavailability enhancer. Meanwhile, in reality, we have a lot of curcumin formulations with enhanced bioavailability. One example is a particular nano emulsion curcumin called NEC formulation, which was shown to boost peak concentrations in the blood by 40 times in mice. 40 times, that's double the boost provided by piperine. So do some quick math on that, assuming the supplement contains just 500 milligrams of curcumin, which is a very typical dose for curcumin supplements. 40 times bioavailability would be equivalent to 20 grams of curcumin. And we just saw that eight grams of curcumin was potentially dangerous, exceeding that 2.5 micromolar concentration that I'm calling the danger zone. So 20 grams would be much more dangerous in my opinion. We also have less obviously dangerous turmeric supplements, like a very popular one sold at Costco called Kirkland Signature Turmeric, which contains 1,000 milligrams per serving of turmeric with black pepper. And if you read the label, it actually does not contain regular turmeric. It's some sort of an extract that is composed of a total of 950 milligrams of curcuminoids and 10 milligrams of piperine. So assuming that a 10 milligram piperine dose produces a 10x boost in curcumin bioavailability, which is just an extrapolation based on the fact that 20 milligrams produces a 20 times boost, then the equivalent dose of curcumin alone would be 9.5 grams. 950 milligrams times 10, 9.5 grams. That also would put us into the danger zone above the 2.5 micromolar threshold that I established as the danger zone. Now keep in mind, we're working with in vitro data here. We are in unexplored territory, but we're doing the best we can with what we have. If you can't tell, so far, I'm not a fan of turmeric or curcumin supplements. But stick around because I am going to tell you the dose of turmeric that I consider to be safe and potentially very beneficial. One last stop before we get there, a couple research papers looking into the therapeutic benefit of turmeric extracts. So the first one looks at a turmeric extract 1.5 grams a day and they found that it was at least as good as ibuprofen 1200 milligrams a day for four weeks in the treatment of osteoarthritis of the knee. Again, bioavailable turmeric extract 1000 milligrams a day was at least as good as acetaminophen 1950 milligrams a day for six weeks in the treatment of osteoarthritis of the knee. So we see some benefit at these dosage levels. Now these are short-term studies. We don't know how the safety and effectiveness plays out in the long term, but as we continue our search for the optimal dose, here's a summary of what we have. In India, they consume two to 2.5 grams of turmeric a day, along with 330 milligrams of black pepper, not necessarily taken together at the same exact time. The toxicity research shows us that the equivalent of about eight grams of curcumin daily is too much, and it should definitely be noted that many supplements provide this amount roughly or more in terms of curcumin equivalents. And the therapeutic research suggests one to 1.5 grams of something roughly equivalent to curcumin per day is beneficial, plus or minus some sort of a bioavailability enhancement. So that leads me to my conclusion, avoid turmeric extracts, avoid curcumin supplements, especially ultra high absorption or bioavailability enhanced. Instead, choose fresh turmeric root or turmeric powder from a trusted source and consume about one to two grams, which is roughly about a quarter teaspoon or more of turmeric a day, and consider adding up to a quarter teaspoon of black pepper to boost curcumin absorption. And that is most likely to provide you with the benefit and avoid potential risks.
If you or anyone you know has received an ablation for atrial fibrillation and you'd like to do everything you can to minimize the risk of a recurrence, then please check out my book, After Ablation. It's available at Amazon and also on my website, DaveRx.com. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time.